If I could save time in a bottle The first thing that I'd like to do Have you ever stopped and asked what time it was after a long plane trip? Have you ever wondered what your exact position is in the world? Have you ever tried calling someone on the other side of the world and thought, are they in bed right now? You might know that some countries are a couple of hours ahead of each other, but in relation to what? The first global standard time was adapted in 1884 at the International Meridian Conference in Washington, D.C. Although now our clocks are set atomically, the start of Greenwich Mean Time marked a huge turning point towards a global economy and new ways that people were thinking about themselves and the rest of the world. As the 1880s began, more ways and needs of communicating were expanding. Railroad tracks were covering the most part of Great Britain and the first long distance phone calls were being made. One of the first issues encountered was each township in Britain having their own time. The times of all of the towns and cities of England were based off of solar movements. This made it hard to know what time a train would arrive. That's when the need for a standard time began. We take the time zones for granted today, and that a city or country could be an hour ahead or behind the time of where we live. That's why the institution of a standardized global time was a major turning point that is still relevant today. By the year 1815, the British Empire had grown to include India and much of the Pacific countries. It had control over what is now Canada and multiple colonies in Africa and South America. It was an age of new technologies, with which Britain was the forerunner. But many of them were imperfect, and the British government and people were not able to use them to their full extent. In the middle of the 19th century, uh, they begin, uh, of course, uh, steamships are introduced. Uh, the potential for moving uh, people and materials and goods and so forth back and forth around the world relatively quickly. Is, uh, begins, uh, you need schedules uh, for these kinds of things, and then when undersea telegraph comes in uh, and it becomes possible to communicate uh, to places like from India back to uh, England uh, within uh, just a few moments, then uh, the need for some sort of system of time uh, becomes that much more necessary. In October of 1884, when the International Meridian Conference took place in Washington, D.C., the attendees included representatives from 25 different countries. At the conference, a proposal was made stating that the prime meridian for longitude and timekeeping should pass through the transit instrument at the Greenwich Observatory in the United Kingdom. This meeting also ensured the establishment of Greenwich Mean Time as a world standard time, as well as Greenwich Meridian as a prime meridian, making this an immeasurably important turning point in history. Railroads had been used in Britain since the 1830s, with the first intercity railway going from Manchester to Liverpool, but it was not until the late 1870s and early 1880s that it became commonplace in Britain, with each, each city having its own individual time based on the movement of the sun and the stars, it could jumble the scheduling of trains even if the times were minutes different. This meant that the travelers and train conductors were very confused about what time a train would get in from another station or when it left from another station, and that created chaos. The British Empire was expanding across oceans along with land, and shipping was in need of a separate reference than communication or railways. The mid-1800s was a time of huge expansion and empire building and ocean navigation helped spread the empire. As Great Britain became a superpower of the seas, they found a great need to more accurately know where boats were in the world for navigational purposes and for map making. 
Sailors used chronometers and stars to establish their position at sea, but again, there was no universal fixed time. Although chronometers could show sailors where they were, they did not have a definite longitude to work from, but they had an equator for latitude. Chronometers were used as timekeepers, which told sailors where they were in the world using the stars. This became important to know how far a boat was from some place. But all of these revolutionized industries changed after one day in October of 1884. With the legal time of Britain now revolving around Greenwich, things improved a great deal. There was much less confusion about scheduling of trains in all cities and townships shared the exact same time. This made train scheduling much more exact and resulted in a much more effective system. With the definite adoption of Greenwich Mean Time, train passengers would know when they would get in at a different station and train conductors knew what time to post for arrival. After Greenwich London had been established as a zero meridian longitude, ocean traveling boats knew exactly where they were, using negative or positive calculations to find the longitude they were at in accordance to the prime meridian in Greenwich. This was important to the British Empire, as it was a marine superpower and controlled the world's oceans, so they needed a means of exact navigation. The use of Greenwich Mean Time also helped sailors know what time it was back in Britain, or where they were going. Why Mean Time? Day and night occurs because of the rotation of the Earth. The Sun crosses the Earth at a speed of 15 degrees per hour from east to west. The time is usually attained from sundials, but since the Sun is not always exact, as much as 16 minutes of a regular clock it is necessary finding the average of the length of the days in a year in order to have a more accurate time. I think it's interesting to think about how today we think of ourselves as living in a, a globalized world, a world dominated by interconnections. But if you look at the establishment of standard time and the reach of new technologies, other new technologies in the 19th century, we realize that the world has been globalized for a long time. And the 1880s and the decades surrounding it were a time of uh, a new level of interconnection and globalization. The late 19th century was a period of turning points as a whole, and Greenwich Mean Time was among the most significant and it still is today. It showed not only that all countries agreed with the British Empire that a standard world time was necessary, but also that it all fell into place rather quickly and soon started taking effect. It improved the uses of new technologies such as steamships and steam engines. It facilitated the ability of trains to travel across a country and to know exactly when it would arrive. It let boats out on the ocean know what their latitude and their longitude was. Before Greenwich Mean Time was established, these new technologies were imperfect and people were not able to use them to their full extent. Greenwich Mean Time was able to facilitate and improve these technologies and that is why it is perhaps the most important turning point in the 19th century and it's still today. These days, Greenwich Mean Time and the Prime Meridian have huge influences on our everyday lives and how we think of ourselves. For example, we know we can say whether we live in the Western or Eastern Hemisphere, or we can say that we live in Eastern Time, Central Time, Mountain Time, or Western Time, and people know exactly what you're talking about. Or you can say, have you ever been to China? There's a 15-hour time difference there and one will be able to tell about how far away China is from where you are. The establishment of time zones lets you know what time it is in a different country after a long flight or train ride. It puts everything in perspective and unites the world as one, and that is how it is a turning point, not only for the use of technology, but how people thought of themselves as a whole.